David Stearns was hired as the president of baseball operations for the New York Mets. Um, the Athletic took a look at his track record over the seven seasons um, with the with the Brew Crew with the Milwaukee Brewers. They looked at his best moves and his worst moves, and to see what that would tell us about how he operates. Um, uh, one of his best moves was trading for Christian Yelich in January 2018. He gave up Monty Harrison, Jordan Yamamoto, Lewis Brinson, and Isan Isan Diaz. According to fan graphs, he gave up minus six wins above replacement, received 19.3 war, so which is a plus of plus 25 war in that trade. Woo. Milwaukee came within one win of the its first National League pennant in 2018. Um, and, you know, freaking Yelich was like the one of the best players, if not the best player in baseball in 2018 and 2019. So um, hell of a deal. In December 2015, he traded Adam Lind to Seattle for Carlos Herrera, Freddie Peralta, and Daniel Misaki. He gave up point one, point one war and received almost a 12 war for plus 12 war. In January 2018, he signed Lorenzo Kane to a five-year, $80 million contract. Kane was, I guess, 32 at the at the age of signing, which is legitimately scares me. I don't know if I like that, but uh he uh, ended up having an 8.5 war, finished seventh in MVP voting with a 119 OPS plus and and uh in 2019 he won a gold glove award. So I don't know if I would have pulled that trigger. And you'll see he he actually had another signing that did not go as well for center field. In December 2016, he traded Tyler Thornburg to Boston for Josh Pennington, Mauricio Dubon, and Travis Shaw, giving up minus 0.4 war and receiving 7.3 war for a plus 7.7 war. Uh, Shaw hit 31 home runs and drove in 101 runs in 2017 and had a 32 home run season in 2018. In May 2021, Stearns traded J.P. Fayer Rison and Drew Rasmussen to the to the Rays for Willie Adamas and Trevor Richards. He gave up 6.8 WAR and received 10.6 WAR for a plus 3.8 WAR uh, outcome. So, and uh, Adamas pretty much a, a stalwart for the Brewers ever since. Speaking the community, so what are the worst moves? You can't be perfect, right? Can't be perfect. There's going to be some hiccups, some mistakes, some missteps along the way. In July of 2022, Stearns traded Josh Hader to San Diego for Taylor Rogers, Robert Gasser, Estuary Ruiz, and Danielson Lemet. He gave up 1.8 war and received minus 0.3 war for a minus 2.1 uh, war outcome. Um, yeah, that's a weird, uh, yeah. I guess, well, they said that uh, Gasser could pan out. Pretty decent prospect, I guess. In July 2018, he, he traded Jonathan Villar. VR, Louis Ortiz and Giancarlo Carmano, Carma, Carmona to Baltimore for Jonathan Shoup, who literally was on the 1989 Cleveland Indians that beat the Yankees in the playoffs in a movie called Major League. <laughs> Wasn't that Shoup? Wasn't Shoup one of the pitchers? He was like the lefty. Um, Stearns gave up 5.3 war, received zero war for a plus minus uh, minus 5.3 war. Uh, and then finally, he traded Will Smith, that Chris Rock slapping son of a gun, to the, the Giants of San Francisco for Phil Bickford and Andrew Suzak. And we are all too familiar with Phil Bickford. <laughs> In that deal, he gave up 3.8 war, Received minus 0.3 war for minus 4.1 war. So he's not without fault, David Stearns. But you'd have to imagine that the combo of Stearns and Epler should produce. I mean, you, yes or no? Do you have more faith and confidence in our offseason with Stearns on board or without? So I think, you know, that's a good combo to have Stearns and Epler. And uh, we can say what we will about Epler. I vehemently against, I cannot say it enough, vehemently against signing Verlander and Scherzer, but the Marte, Kenna, and Escobar signings were well-received when it happened. Uh, I think people weren't as high on Escobar as the 2022 season 
panned out, but he did come up big with a huge September. And so everyone thought, wow, those are three solid additions. Those are considered wins, right? And then, you know, he trades he trades <laughs> two of the three. <laughs> uh, you know, a season later. Trade, I mean, we trade Verlander half a season, Scherzer one and a half season. So it's like, um, kind of hitting the reset button. And uh, I, I, I hope they just don't go for the big splashy names anymore. I just, you know, I was talking about bringing Juan Soto in and I'm just like, can we just take a look at the Padres for a second and like the amount of money they've invested and how like they're now, there's word saying that they're going to lose Juan Soto, they're going to lose Manny Machado. Uh, they're not going to lose them. They're just not going to, they're going to look to deal them because they want to get the salary cap under 200 million or something like that. I don't know. They're looking to shed salary. And so that, that, you know, it's, it's fucking nuts that, you know, Machado signed a huge contract. They all signed like big contracts and it's just didn't pan out. So it's like, I'd rather just pick up solid dudes. That makes sense. Like guys that are not going to really wow you on paper. Maybe they're not even like, you know, they're not at the top of their position, but they're just solid dudes. Show up to the ballpark, put in the work, give us average numbers. <laughs> like that's all we're looking for. We're just looking for guys that can round out the lineup. Um, you know, I mean, yes, you, you probably want to get a DH, although if Vientos can, I don't know. I don't know if you want to put all your eggs in the Vientos basket. I wouldn't personally. I would just get a like a legitimate DH. Um, it's really going to be the rotation, the bullpen, you know, we just, we need a shit ton of arms. So maybe that is why they're like, we can do what we can do. We can do as much as we can do. We'll try, but 2024 is probably not in the cards for us <laughs> just cause they have they, so many glaring holes and so many needs in that bullpen and, and the rotation. You know, I don't think you can feel too confident. I mean, it's nice what Peterson and McGill have put together for us over the last month or so. I, you can't count on them. I wouldn't count on them. It's like, yeah, you're on the roster, but like, you're not in the starting rotation. I, I mean, that was pretty much the idea before this season got started. And then, of course, Verlander gets hurt and then Shirley will get hurt. Blah, 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 blah. So, but it's good to have him on board. And um, it's sneaky, though. Because it's like we can only fill so many positions in the off season, and then if we can just hang around at the deadline, maybe some other guys come through at the deadline. You know, I mean, I think that's essentially what happened in 2015. It's just like we hung around long enough to say, "Hey, we got a shot here," and not like I mean, there are some other seasons where it's like we thought we had a shot and we go all in and backfires. I mean, 2021 with Javi Baez, um, the 2016 with Jay Bruce. But that that is very plausible in my mind. So uh, I guess once the season's over, we can do an official moratorium. But I don't. I mean, you get it. We've pretty much beaten a dead horse. <laughs> this is like nothing left. It's a pope. It's a pope, y'all. So with that, I want to thank you for listening and for watching, and we'll talk to you next time.